content. Sorry, just trying to get everything situated. Um, so today I'm going to be sewing with my projector and making a dress, a custom dress for a friend. <coughs> I was in the middle of inventory, so things were not where they were supposed to, supposed to be, excuse me. So I'm using this super cool fabric. Tiny rainbow pinstripes, very fun. And it is stretchy, so I'm not gonna need my iron. I couldn't remember which version we were doing. So, first thing that uh, I use a tablet instead of a full computer. So I've got a, a full computer upstairs, but I don't really have space for a big computer in, in the sewing studio. And <clears throat> since I don't really need the functionality of a laptop, since I've got a desktop upstairs, tablet is just fine. So it's a tablet that has, um, uh, I use Adobe. There are, you have to have a PDF reader to be able to use the projector. Um, cause what it does is it projects the patterns onto your cutting surface and the, uh, and most of these patterns are in Adobe and you can get it for free. And so I'm going to show you everything that I do to get set up for it. And my first thing was to clear off the workspace and let the tablet fire up. You might hear the space heater in the background. It is a very uh, balmy uh, 57 degrees right now in my sewing studio because I'm in the basement. It's not great. Insulation is not great, but it's on the list, right? And I'll make sure that all of my words, the words are going the right way, and then so I'm waiting for the tablet to warm up. Go over here. Sorry. I'm gonna lower the blinds because it's very bright in here, which is what I want for a sewing studio most of the time. Just trying to get it dark. All right. I'll probably end up turning off the lights. We'll see. So this is a new pattern that I have not worked on before. It is from Georgian Ginger, and it is the Fleur Top pattern that they have. So with the projector uh, pattern, you still need instructions. So I printed out the instructions and I didn't have to print out the 50 plus pages of pattern and tape it together because that's not fun for anyone. All right, so Turn on our projector. There we go. So if you miss the studio tour, projector is mounted right up here. And so y'all can see that a little bit better there. So 
So again, because I'm not using a full computer in my studio, I've got a Chromecast on the projector so that I can connect to it wirelessly. So this is the Google Chrome or the, the Chrome stuff coming through right now. So the next thing to do is go to Google Home and I'm gonna turn on my uh, screen mirroring. So there's a little option that says cast my screen and mirror device, so that's perfect. And Alexa, turn off craft. Okay. So I went ahead and turned off the lights. Okay. And there is my screencast from my tablet. Super fun. Sorry, I don't know that, but I do have a story you might like. It's called my day book. Never Diary. mind. Journal. No assistance. Please. Alexa. You want to try it? Stop. She's so nosy. Okay. So we got that. And then we're going to go in here and open up Adobe Acrobat. Here we go. Y'all can see that a little bit better. And so what I do is because I'm um, working with a computer upstairs that I put it onto my document cloud so I don't have to store it on my tablet. And I'm pulling out the pattern now. And I use the black and white because the brightness is such an issue for me. So there is the pattern. Now this has the sizes turned on. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is figure out how to turn off the layers on the app. Probably should have planned this part before, but okay. I know how to do it on the computer. I can maybe do this. Well, in that case, I am going to take a quick break and go take care of this on the computer and I will be right back.
two seconds, y'all. I did remember the right size is. All right, so I made a layer version that's specific for my friend's measurements. Uh, I have to grade the sizes for her, which is not uncommon, especially with dresses. So the projector is wireless already. Um, or Bluetooth, I forget, uh, and then I plugged in the Google Chromecast into the back of the projector and made sure that it was the same Wi-Fi as my tablet, and um, the tablet is an Android tablet, so I can Chromecast with it, or is a, a non-Apple um, tablet, I guess is more accurate. It's an Asus. So... I've got this, really? That's disappointing, okay. So for whatever reason, it does not want to save the layers. So that will be something to troubleshoot for another day. So my fabric is directional, which means that there are designs that go one way. So I wanna make sure I get the right direction going the right way. <clears throat> so, because of my sewing room setup, I've got to sort of run it this way, which is fine. And I handy dandy space heater. It was 57 when I started, and now it is 64. So go space heater, go. So the other thing you wanna always double check when you're using the projector is that there is this little box right here that is the size box. So I wanna check and make sure that it's still two inches because I tried this once before. You can see there we got two here and oh, it's a little bit smaller than two that way. Interesting. All right. Now it's a little bit bigger. Uh, she's tall, longer should be fine. All right, so you want it to all match up. And uh, that little box. I don't know why it's not exactly two by two square. 
So the first time I tried to do this, I ended up cutting along the wrong line, which um, made it three sizes too big. It's luckily it's very cute three sizes too big, but it was not what I had intended. So here's the top. And because this is, uh, this particular style is a, um, it's a single shoulder with some accent straps that'll go this way. So we're not doubling up our fabric because there's no duplicate to cut because the back is different from the front. So I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna mess up my zoom if I do that, but there we go. All right, so the first line we're cutting on is the solid with the two, is the second solid two dashes, see? Yeah, I'll have to figure out why it doesn't want to, uh, why it doesn't want to display it without the layers on the mobile app, I'll ask around. There is a great uh, Facebook group that is, um, I think it's called Projectors for Sewing. It's literally the name of the group. You know exactly what you're getting. Right, two. Cool. All right. Uh, and that is very helpful in how you can set it up and all that sort of thing. So we're back to the right zoom size. And go up here. And so the plan is that we're going to start. And because we have to go this direction, that I will trace it and then we'll cut it out. So still that extra step, but way better than taping together patterns and then, all right. So, also this is not a self-healing cutting mat, it's just this one of those cardboard ones. All right, I'm gonna have to count. I'm gonna have to count the lines this is not it's weird some of it is clear and some of it is not right. yes all right so check our box one more time because that's way bigger than two inches Okay. So we are going to start because the top is a small and the bottom is a large. We're going to have to grade out eventually. We're going to start up here. One, two, three, four, five, six is the line we want. So that's the top right there. One, two, three, four, five. I'll double check here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it is a stretchy material that I'm working with, so it can be a little more forgiving than a woven. But I will figure out how to master that so that I can just turn the layers on and make it even easier on myself. But that is a project for another day. 
All right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. I also didn't plan this great since I'm left-handed and the projector is basically over my left hand. But what are you going to do? Got to work with what you got, right? So there are a couple of different types of projectors. I am using the one that is mounted on my ceiling. But there is another one that I was considering, which is called a short throw, that sits on the table and projects up into a mirror and then reflects down. Um, so if this continues to be a problem, I may switch over to that instead. But we'll see. All right. So this marking right here is where the actual straps that are not the shoulder strap are going to go. I can see that a little bit better. So, got a mark here, and a mark here, and a mark here. All right, we're gonna keep following this line right here, and check our map again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. see I was not following the right thing okay yeah that that was it there we go right there right there this part is easy, you just go straight down. And I turn the, so this is a custom printed fabric, so it's got a white background on the back, which makes it a lot easier. For this bit. All right, so, oh no, I moved, I moved my thing, terrible, okay. So now I'm just going down the other side here. And right about this point is where I want to start doing the grating um, because this flares out at the bottom. There. I don't know if you all can see that or not, but my screen just went to sleep, so. All right, so I'm gonna move this up about there and then Close my pen so I don't draw all over everything. And I'm gonna pull the fabric up and try and keep it as straight as possible until it matches the new projection. And let's see if we can get a little bit more. And actually this is a really good time for this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So my friend is tall, taller than the original um, model for this particular pattern. So I want to um, make it longer for her because of her height. So I make sure that we get this lined back up. I think I've got 
got it pretty close. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, super close. Good job, y'all. All right. So, right here it says that uh, to shorten uh, or lengthen. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is take my marker and I want to lengthen this two inches for her. So I'm going to take it at the lengthen line. Right? So, he actually... I want to do this. That's what we'll do. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to continue to pull this straight up. That's probably too far, but much easier to push it back. So my length and line from the corner to the dash is two inches. So I want to, four inches is where I want to continue that. So let me bring that down. And since I'm going to be grading it out anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, one more inch. If I was doing this with a paper pattern, I would tape in the two inches and in paper. It's probably too much. Yeah, just a little bit though. Perfect, all right. And the reason I'm being so precise on this is because I'm gonna have to do the same thing um, on the back side because I'm lengthening it. So I want them all to match up when I make my cuts. All right, so what that means is, check our measurement again, because I moved the pattern. Yeah. I'll do it over here so y'all can see. So what I found was that I want it four inches over here, and this is currently at five and a half, or four and a half, rather. So. Perfect. So on this side, just so y'all can see it, we are lengthening it basically by three and a quarter because we're matching it up to the straight line, even though this top piece isn't straight. So what that means is that I'm going to retrace uh, some of these lines on the outside like I was starting at the top again, uh, but only staying on the sides, if that makes any kind of sense. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, got a little bit off. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I'm going the wrong direction. Goodness. Is this some extra kind of physics, y'all? One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. There we go. All right. Make sure we're still at four inches here. A little bit short. There we go. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, all right. So now I can keep drawing straight down like I was just doing the regular pattern. And you can see um, over here, maybe, that this dark line is where I was tracing before, but since we are lengthening it, that it's going to go straight a little bit while longer. Mm. Something doesn't look right. Nope, that's right. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. There. One, two, three, four, five, six. It is the sixth line. Yes. Okay. That matches up again. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know how I did that. All right. I was on the wrong line here. That's okay. That's why we triple check our work. And it may not seem like two inches is a lot, but in sewing lands, it is actually quite a bit. All right, so now we're getting down to the hip area. And so, one, two, three. Just playing tricks on my, on my eyes, y'all. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, okay. I don't know what the deal is. So we're going to grade this out now to the other size as we're getting towards the hips because we want it to land on the, that measurement. It's sort of like when you're decelerating in a, when you see the speed zone coming up that you go from 55 to 45. It's that kind of idea. All right. So our size that we are grading up to is the next set of that straight line with two dashes that I'm sure y'all can't see. All right, so. All right, we're just gonna zoom in and then we'll zoom back out. So six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we're gonna go nine instead of six. I think that's the right size again. That would be exciting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Okay. Now this is clearly off somewhere. Let's see. A little bit big. go all right so that is our right scale and one two three four five six there we go make sure that this is four inches and it is all right we're getting good at this now y'all that's <laughs> just the fronts oh my all right so we're grading out to the ninth line instead of the sixth line now. So what I'm going to do is down here, I'm going to count out one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. This is the line we want right here. So you see from here to here, it's not a big jump. All right, and then over here, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which will mark and then count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, perfect. All right. So, and follow our longer line here. And grading is not quite an exact science. Uh, you're basically making a line from one size to another. So, again, this is a stretch fabric, so it's pretty forgiving about stuff like that. So, I'm going to take this line, because this is the correct one, and I'm drawing it out to over here. And kind of ignoring all the lines in the middle. All right, so now they're both graded out to the ninth line as we get into the hip area. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right. So now what we're going to do is move everything again. So we're going to have to move our fabric first and then we'll move the pattern that seems to be the easiest way to do it. Check our box again. Scale has not changed. Awesome. So now we just have to redo here. All right, so this is four inches. So this is the right location of the pattern. So what that means is now we have to count our lines again. One, two, This line, like that. Yes. Amazing. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There it is. Cool. So what I'm going to do to help myself out is I'm going to go ahead and draw, keep drawing down line number nine now because that's what we graded out to. And I'm going to put a little uh, mark right here. Um, I'm sorry if y'all can't see that. Um, this is where the top would go if this was going to be a shirt. We're making a dress, so we're going to be continuing to lengthen past that. But I want to be able to have something to line up with the projector. So let's make a little mark right there. And now we can go ahead and keep pulling the fabric up. Okay. That's a bunch. All right. So I know that that is not the correct location of the lines, but Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, 
two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Alright, so that is really close. Cool. Alright, so I'm going to keep going down. Keep going down. There we are. We just had to fiddle with it a little bit. Hmm. Well, looks like I might have run into a problem and put it too close to the edge. We'll see. Oh no, we can make that work. Definitely make that work. Okay. So I'm gonna keep going down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, line number nine. It is a little bit short on this side, but it should be okay. Okay, and then over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. What I'm gonna do, because it's being cut off by the PDF reader, is that we will go this way. There it is. All right, so this is the bottom for our the front of our dress. So now what we're gonna do is Pull the fabric up some more. And now we're gonna line it up with the bottom so that we can draw our curve in because it's got a curve front and then the curve bottom that is lower. Make sure we've got plenty of room since we're lining up with this bottom piece here. So I feel like I'm getting good at this, y'all. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is why we count every time because I picked the wrong line, which is exactly what I did last time. And since I'm using my tablet, I can just use um, just a finger on the touch screen. all inverted because I am at mirror casting. It's part of my mental gymnastics here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There it is. All right. Now 
And of course I've now lost my marker, which I should be putting in my pocket, but why would I do that? this all squared up on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's try again. One, two, three, four, five, I see. These are the shorter ones. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That makes a lot more sense. All right. All right. We got it now. All right. So I went ahead and stayed with the side, uh, with the ninth line for the bottom uh, because we were using those, uh, because we use that larger measurement on the bottom, we need to stay in that same size range all the way through the bottom of the garment. Okay, and then we'll go this side as far as we can. Yeah, I must have my thing crooked. And I'm writing all over my walls. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, here. And here is the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. Awesome. Okay. We're gonna follow our curve. Here we go. Top is totally traced out and ready for cutting, which is gonna help cutting as I go because of my setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the top real quick and we'll set it off to the side, or the front rather, to the front. And I just want to make sure my tablet doesn't fall asleep on me. can't really cut on the floor um, because of my back so I need a table for cutting on. I have considered getting one that I could put like in the middle of the room that's a larger cutting surface and I might I might do that upgrade this year and it will just live here on the side but then uh, my boyfriend would kill me because we mounted this projector on the wall for me to do this. Or on the ceiling, rather. Oh, we might be able to angle it. We'll see. I probably should have thought of that before I got excited about projector sewing. But how can you not be excited about projector sewing? All 
All right, first piece cut out front. Let's see how we did keeping those lines straight. Really good, y'all. Good job. All right. All right. I'm confident that this is not three sizes too big, which was my problem last time. I made a very cute oversized flannel shirt. It is now basically like a southern house coat. All right, so this is now at the end of the material. So we're gonna go on to the back. So the back we're gonna cut on a fold and there's also a lining. which we can do out of different fabric. Okay. All right. Let's see what we can do. And remember the um, the modification we had to do on the front, we're gonna have to also do on the back so it matches. So I have a bit of a dilemma here. And my dilemma is that my fabric is not long enough. And I don't think wide enough. Let's try. Before we have to start looking for other solutions, let's see if the simplest one is one that we can do. I was also checking to make sure I didn't have a second cut somewhere. Okay, so again with our words. I wanna make sure they're going the right direction. And they are, okay. Fold is over here. Let's see what we can work with. So we'll start out like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Forever allergies are forever. Okay. So we know from the last cut we made that I want to check and make sure. I don't think the scale has changed. Just a little bit. There we go. Perfect. All right. So we know that it's gonna have to go out. So let's get all the way to the edge here. So we're gonna have to go out to the ninth line down in this area, right? One, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's gonna go a little bit further. So this is probably about as far as we can go on this side. So here's our fold line. So let's see if we can make this work. So there's the fold. Yeah. So it works fine up top, but then as we get further down, two, three, four, Yeah, it's going to cut off. It's going to be too short. Uh, even if we go up to the very top of the fabric, it's still, for that back piece, it's going to be too short. So, what I'm thinking is that I will cut the back on the top like I was doing a, uh, a regular top. She wanted a high-low anyway, which means that it's shorter in the front and longer in the back. 
So I'm gonna cut, um, like I'm cutting a top, and then I will cut a separate piece that's going to be attached in the at the back at the waistline that will then attach again. That should work for us. Great. Space heater doing your job. Cool. So you're going to in fact I'm gonna do it just a little bit more so I can get as much usage out of my fabric as I possibly can. Alright, there's the fold. Okay. So again, we're gonna start at the top with line number six. Very cold. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is this line? Two, three, four, five, six. All right. You go all the way uh, straight across here. There we go. All right, so we've got our one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, we've got our um, lengthening line, which we're going to do another two inches. So from here to here is two inches. So we want that to be another two. So just pulling my under mat straight up. Yeah, all right. So that has lengthened it two inches right there at the top. So lengthening stuff this way is super easy. So I'm excited about that. And it makes life easy for me. One, two, three, four, five, six. Still the correct line. Here we go. And again, we're gonna wanna grade out to line nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. So we've got a little bit of distance to go here. Right as it starts to curve, that's when you want to start grading out. And the cool thing is uh, I have some friends who are not, uh, I'm very, very hourglass shaped. And so I can usually do ready to wear not ready to wear, but uh, like ready to sew from the patterns because they are typically made for somebody who has a body shape like me. But for my friends who do not, I can make them custom fitting garments that we can lengthen it and we can grade for it. And so being able to um, be able to do that for them is super fun and exciting for me. All right, I'm gonna sneeze again here in a minute. All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna pull this up. And you can see where we're starting to run out of this top fabric right here. So I'm gonna move our pattern. This is why I wanted a tablet instead of just projecting straight from the computer upstairs because I'd have to be running around upstairs every five minutes as I was moving the pattern forward. A laptop would probably be better, uh, again, because of this layering issue, but I'll do some more research on that. Okay, 
there is the fold. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. I had my fabric crooked. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. All right. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. I get very excited about these things. So, and again, if we were going to follow this line all the way down, we would run out of fabric right here. So instead, I'm going to cut it on the top cut line and then I'll figure it out. I might have to put a seam down the middle, which is not what I want to do, but um, we clearly did not order enough of this fabric for it to be fussy cut. and. It is not being printed anymore. So we gotta do what we gotta do. All right, here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna go down to here. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we are. Okay. All right. So that is going to be our top, or the back with the top line. And then what I'm going to try to do, yeah, see I have all of this fabric, but it's not enough to make it wide in one direction. So what I will do is go ahead and cut out this piece that we just traced. And then we'll get creative. normally trash a piece that small but since we are going to be making straps for this I'm gonna hang on to it so here's our back that is at that top uh, level so let's well, real quick let's see what the mannequin has to say
Alexa, turn on craft. Okay. So we're taking a little break from the projector for just a minute because what I want to do is go ahead and get this on the dress form so we can make sure that we've got the right sizes and that because we're going to be doing this modification that um, we've got everything the way we want it to be. So, and just adjusting everything down so I can start from scratch. Dress form does not like to have a bunch of things out of proportion. All right, so. This is Sandy, if you haven't met yet. All right, so let's check and see if that is the correct measurement here. this particular project. Oh, right. Perfect. All right. Next, we've got our hip measurement or a waist measurement rather. should be fine. And then our hip measurement. Andy does not like these sorts of extremes here. All right. And this is how I do most of my commissions because I don't usually do it for people who um, are new me especially with the pandemic going on. All right, so that is an inch smaller, but it'll give us a good idea because we're not doing completely fitted. So, all right, so this is our front piece. Pin that into the dress form again because it is double checking because I got scared for a minute that I had done it backwards. Okay. Okay. Since it's a stretch material, you won't be able to see these holes when it is done. So it's not going to be a perfect fit because we're not going to have um, elastic and stuff in here. But here is the front pinned on. And then we're going to take our back piece, which we cut at the top length. And 
looking good. Oh yeah, all right. So, Actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pin over the edges of the fabrics. And that will give us a much better idea of how it actually fits than just pinning it to the dress form. Well, this is definitely the right size, so I'm very excited about that. All right. So this is our front and our back. Move it out a little bit so you all can see the whole thing. There you go. So this is the dress length in the front, and this is the shirt length in the back. So what I'm gonna do is match up right where it starts to curve, where it starts to flare. That's going to be our best way to do this measurement. Like so. And then find out where it starts to flare and match it up. So as you can see, there's a couple inches difference from the dress front to the shirt back. So this is our current difference. lines up perfectly with the markings we made on the front for the shirt and that is nine inches so the difference between the dress the shirt and the dress is nine inches but we want this to be a high low dress uh, so my friend is five nine which is much taller than me so let's see that centimeters pardon me Sandy All right, so. All right, 56 minus two is 54. Um, so about 54 inches for me from floor to top of shoulder. So I am five foot two, I'm 62 inches tall. And so that means that my friend is five nine, she is seven inches taller than me, just 69 inches. So this is 54 inches on me, you add seven inches, make it 61 inches from the top of the shoulder down to the floor. And the reason 
and that's pretty dang close. So we'll leave it just like that. So this way I can sort of tell what the high low is going to look like on somebody who's much taller than me. So if it's nine inches in the front here for a regular dress for her to make it just a regular dress length all the way around, then I'm going to want to make it even longer in the back. I don't want it too long, but typically what happens is a high low comes about to mid thigh in the front and about knee in the back. So that it may be a little bit lower. So So we'll see if we can get an additional nine inches. So that means I want to make uh, basically a tail piece for this dress that is 18 inches wide and then the same distance around. Now, because of my material um, limitations, I probably I'm going to have to make it in two pieces and have a seam down the center, which is not ideal, but uh, again, I can't get any more of this fabric, so I gotta use it the smartest way I know how. So I'm gonna set my scraps aside for the moment. And my very important tools of marker and tape measure over here. So the first thing we're gonna look at is, all right, so this is clearly gonna be too small. I say clearly, we should measure. Yeah, so this is approximately 14, 15 inches of a piece. So I can't use that. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow it along. So I've got these little sort of leg bits All right, this is the up and down. So I'm gonna just cut basically this top piece off. Oops. And this is the other sort of weird top piece. storage over there. So now all I've got left is this piece, which is longer at the bottom. So let's see how wide it is. If we could do just one piece, that would be awesome. So we're going to fold it in half. This might work, y'all. Okay. see how long this is because I'd be okay if it was an inch or two shorter all right At our thinnest point which is where this curve is it's 24 inches so this is perfect I'm so excited y'all that means only one seam right around here which we couldn't help because of our fabric limitations so there's a technique in uh in sewing it's called uh, a fussy cut where you place things on patterned uh, fabrics to get things to line up and to get all that sort of thing. But usually what ends up happening is that you have more material left over because if it was just a solid color, then I could cut upside down and all sorts of stuff. And I can't do that because this is a one direction print, but not a big deal. So make sure that our words are the right way and they are. So um, Alexa, turn off craft, please. Okay. All right. So we're gonna go back. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Alexa, stop. She's just so boozy. I know I said that already, but she is. All right, so fire back up the tablet real quick because it just went into sleep mode on us.
my battery is low. Well, good thing that we are almost done. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the tablet over here. There we go. Oh, and it saved our spot. How cool. All right. So let's double check our uh, two inch square again. Yep, still two inches wide, which is what we were using. Okay. And now, see, we have so much more room out here with it folded this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way up here. And what my plan is, is that we're going to match the same curve at the top and then bring it down to the bottom. So in order to do that, that can go. Okay. Trying to maximize my workspace here while I'm, while I've got this thing plugged in. All right. So these are fold. So I'm going to have to move our fabric over. go. All right. So we are going to, it's still not quite on the fold, is it? There it is. Okay. Let's move this out. All right, so we're gonna follow along this path again, and then we're gonna go down the side here, and then we're gonna basically do like we did before, where we're just gonna move everything up to be able to trace the bottom. So this distance here is probably that nine inches. All right, it's actually eight, but it's close enough. So here to here, uh-huh is the nine. So mm -hmm. that's what we want to do. Y'all are so smart. Oh, I thought I could fit it on a chair over here, but my charging cable is not long enough. So basically what I'm trying to do, and I just undid what I was trying to do, is I want this to be at the very top of my cuttable surface. Right. 
Cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So instead of cutting where the pattern says to cut at the bottom here, I'm going to move it down once I've got the top shape done and basically use as much of this material as I can. And then if it's too long or looks like it's going to be too long, then we can always trim it. So handy dandy Sharpie. And again, because we graded this, this is going to be the, the line number nine instead of the line at number six. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <coughs> And since I am not doing anything about seam allowances, that we just need to keep that in mind because this is not intended to be a two piece sort of thing. Um, so it is gonna shorten it up just a little bit, just like a half an inch, which is the other reason to go ahead and just use all the material that I can. All right, <clears throat> so I go straight down this line. And I'm gonna put a little mark basically in that corner. And, <clears throat> excuse me. You're just gonna pull the fabric up. So I don't know if y'all can see, but that moved quite a bit over here on this side. All right, so next step. sure what happened on the fold there. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I really don't know what happened on the fold there. I might have cut the wrong, I might have drawn on the wrong line. It's entirely possible. But this is actually pretty easy to fix. So we're just gonna line it up like this. I'm not sure what's happening over here, but that's okay because we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's see how much that actually gave us on the edges here. Yeah, four inches and then it'll be eight or nine down at the bottom. 
because it's on a curve. So before we continue though, uh, I'm gonna do my little thing here. What I wanna do is just double check and make sure that I didn't, nope, that's still the same. Okay, so it is something that I did the fold line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what this mess was over here. There we go. So that is going to be the bottom of our skirt. So you also have in this area here, the collar. So while I've got it folded and because we're going to be cutting two of these that are mirrored, I'm going to go ahead and pull my fabric over. further in the PDF because it's at the edge. But that's all right. We've got us a system. And the collar starts here and y'all definitely can't see that. So I'm just going to do that quick. All right. So let's look at the size for this. Check our square again. All right. So now that we've got the right size, here, do the collar. Trying to keep my left hand out of the way here. All right, there's our collar. So we're gonna have to do the linings and the straps. So let's see. Front lining, back lining, and I think yeah, so the straps are, um, are something separate. They've got their own measurements elsewhere in the document. So let's see 
because I don't mind putting the lining with a seam. All right, so the lining is not gonna fit in this space that we left cut out. We do have a couple of large-ish pieces that I have a more fun idea. So let's go ahead and get these cut. So there's our tail piece. And here's our collar. There are two pieces in here. It said to cut two mirrored, so I did. So let's go ahead and do this. Alexa, turn on craft, please. Okay. So this is sort of our moment of truth here. Make sure that I actually did it right. The expression sort of is usually defined as in a way, somewhere, rather. Alexa, stop. Remember when I said earlier that it wasn't going to matter that we ran out of a little bit of extra on on that one side? Well, what's going to happen is because this is a high-low, we are going to have to alter the, the silhouette of the hemline just a little bit, but not by much. And I need my clips for this. It'll be faster. So here's what we've got is dress length in the front and then more length in the back. It's not a whole lot of extra length. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything together and I'm not going to finish the bottom and send it to my friend, have her try it on, see how she feels about the lengths because you can always make it shorter, but I don't want to make the front too short if that's not going to work for her. So, the concept is there. 
so that's good. The colors aren't gonna line up on the stripes, but it's the best that I could do with what I had, unfortunately. So, the next thing is, so now we've got our collar pieces, so we're gonna put that over here. So, the way that this shirt goes together, I'll show y'all a picture of the finished product. So there's our shoulder strap, right? And then we have these three little stripies here. And then on the back, can't really see it under the hair of these models, or you can see it there at the bottom, that this little collar piece we just cut out is gonna actually go from, oh, she's so tall. Okay, sorry, now it's very far away, but she's so tall. So we're gonna take our collar piece and that's gonna attach to the strap, which is going to attach to the other three straps that are coming down, or rather, yeah. So it attaches to the shoulder, and that creates the piece around to attach the three straps that are gonna go over here. So it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty neat uh, concept for design. All right, while we're doing that, while we're here, all right, you need one width of fabric for straps shown in red. Okay. Are you gonna tell me? There we go. All right, I need three straps, and they need to be 6.75 inches long. I need three of them to be two and a half inches, two inches wide. So let's look at our straps. This one will work. I bet. Yeah, that's too thin on this side for the uh, for the lining. So we're gonna have to use a different material for the lining, but that's okay. Or have two pieces and stitch them together. All right, so these would be two inches long, or sorry, two inches wide and 6.75 inches long and I need three of them. So let's see what we got here. So this is a 10 and a half inches. So not quite enough to make two out of a single strip. So, Let's go like this, see if we can get miss all that those curls. So each of the squares on my uh, mat is an inch. So two inches, and since it's folded over, it'll be four, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches, we'll call it. So that would be, oh, that's doubling it. Okay, never mind. this will be perfect. Overthinking it. So two inches up. There we go. Let's move this out of the way. And then we're gonna cut on this one. these two again. So now we've got a total of four of these straps. And then we want our 6.75 from the previously folded end. So I'm going to cut seven inches and then I can trim it down to the 6.75 individually. Sometimes 
that uh, I'm using cotton lycra and it curls because of the way that it's made and that can sometimes lead to imprecise measurements. All right, so here's the first one. Six and three quarters. See, it was already pretty close. There's one. This one I just gotta straighten out the cut. Which is a little bit not straight. But that's alright, it'll be close. We've got our three straps that are at six and three quarters. And we've got all the major dress pieces cut out. I do still need to cut out the lining, but we're gonna use a different fabric for that or piece together these. I'll have to do some, uh, some work on that and figure it out. Uh, but it is about that time. So this seemed like a good stopping point. So thank you everybody who came to hang out while we were projector sewing, uh, projector pattern sewing, I guess. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see y'all next time.